This is Christopher Berry from The Walking Dead, and you're listening to Chris Gordon and Ramblings of a Hellblazer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and good Abend für meine deutsche Anhörer, insbesondere die Tatjana und die Stephanie. Ich hoffe, alles gut geht und schönen Abend noch. So today I am proud to present a guest who has been on before, however since his last appearance before Christmas, he has appeared in one of the biggest shows on TV at the moment, and in a role, although it brief, lasted very briefly, he's managed to get himself a huge amount of fans. So without further ado, I, I will introduce you to the wonderful Chris Berry. So good evening everyone, and once again I am delighted to welcome back uh, the wonderful Chris Berry. <laughs> good evening Chris. Glad to... Excellent. Yeah, good morning for you again. Sorry, I keep forgetting. It's actually well, it's afternoon. afternoon now, isn't it? Yeah. About one thirty. It's, uh, it's afternoon. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. No. Yes, has it, is it colder there today? Because I know last time you were out in the green grass in the green. No, uh, I just for some reason my internet reception wasn't doing so well on the back porch, so I had to move it into the living room closer to the to the router. But uh, it's actually a beautiful day in New Orleans. Uh, it's, it's about seventy four, seventy three. Very very lovely, clear sky. Nice. Fantastic. It's yeah. snowing, it's hailing, and it's pouring with rain and freezing <laughs> and blowing a gale here in Wales. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, well, I, I don't do that. That's I, I, one thing I can't stand is the cold. <laughs> I had to stop the car on the way home because the rain was that heavy and a bus went by the other side and the spray. I just oh, had to literally stop the car in the middle of the road because I just couldn't see or do anything. It was horrendous. That's how bad it was today. No kidding. I mean, you guys probably get it worse in storm season, but, you know. We get a lot of tornadoes and stuff. In fact, there was a tornado, a couple, three tornadoes uh, just last week that tore up some houses uh, on the west side of town. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't get those. I'm quite, I'm quite, yeah, I don't envy you having tornadoes. Well, wait for it, my friend. Clim- climate change. You never know what you'll be getting in the future. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> terrible. Right? Oh, yeah. So we've done... Yeah totally changed the weather for Britain so right. yeah that's going to get a uh, lovely and uh, interesting I think in the future <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, it's it, it does, what is that Chinese curse may you live in interesting times hmm yeah <laughs> here we are <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well we're off to Florida in May so we can have nice hot weather for us weather oh cool yeah you'll have, you'll have a good time Florida in May is actually a good time to go it's, it's springtime so it's not that it's not that impressive now go in July and it's a different story. Oh god, yeah. I mean, we've been three times now. It's like every three years. So I mean, someone's like three, six, and now he's nine. When he was three, it was dropped. No, it didn't drop below forty, forty-two centigrade. So that's like well over a hundred. Right. Um, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I can't well, figure I, that out in Fahrenheit. But yeah, we it just it was oppressive. It just we couldn't go. That was in June, and we just couldn't do anything. Well, the, the humidity is what really does it too. Mm. I mean, it's just incredibly. Th- you could cut the, cut the air with a knife practically. It's it's so humid. It's like that in New Orleans too, though. So that's what it is. <laughs> acclimated to it. I come from a very dry, hot but dry climate, so I, I had to acclimate myself. No, oh, cool. Yeah. New Orleans is definitely some place I'll be on. It's on my list to come to. <laughs> well, come on out, Chris. We'll have a good time. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah, when it happens, I'll I'll give you a call. <laughs> right. Well, you got my. Oh, yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, anyway, so we're going to go on to these questions now, because obviously you have been in the one of the hottest shows in, I'd say, pretty much the world at the moment. This is The Walking Dead. Um, you know, it, was a, it might not have been a very long role, but it certainly made a huge impact. <laughs> 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 when I'm, again, it's like we've just been talking about this. I'm, it's going to be so hard not to make the puns. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's almost impossible not to make puns about this role. It's really funny. Uh, yeah, it was. I, it's kind of liberating now since it's 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 done. So I, I I'm free to talk about it. The last time you and I spoke, I, I had to hold my tongue. I know it's quite difficult. <laughs> it was, and and the truth is, the hardest part of this whole thing has been not to try to to, to spill the beans. You know, I've had so many of my friends and family and and people just ah God, they keep saying, oh, I can't wait to see what happens with your character this season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, badly to say, no, don't get your hopes up because it's pretty <laughs> definitively over after about five minutes. But, um, but yeah, it it, it was a very sh- a short uh, lived time on The Walking Dead, but it was definitely it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. 
Oh yeah, well I say you've managed to get a, a big fan base as well because you know the, the brief appearance that you made a huge, I was say it made a big bang for people to you know to uh, yeah. for your character. It, it was actually it's very it's really gratifying how many people really um, really took to that character and really enjoyed the enjoyed that 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 character and wanted to see more. Um, I mean, obviously that's what I, I wanted that and yeah. when I was doing the performance, but uh, I, I'm. I have to say, I was a little shocked and a little, and very pleasantly shocked at, at how many people really, um, really took to the character. Oh yeah, I say it was fantastic. I mean, I was eagerly awaiting for it, and then when I saw your Twitter, because obviously we get it day a day later, um, so obviously your Twitter exploded, and I saw obviously all the retweets and people saying it was a brilliant performance. I'm no, I mean, <laughs> it's like just wait for 24 hours, and I'll see it myself. <laughs> so you get it like 24 hours later. We do, yeah. I think it's on. Is it a Sunday night? It's on. Yeah, Sunday yeah, night. We, we get it on the Monday night. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, I mean, is that commonplace like, for American shows that you, you're always like maybe one day behind, or is it just for it's the Walking Dead? That's just for the Walking Dead. They've done that because I think it was such a huge show. Um, huh. Because of the spoilers would go out and ruin it. They they did that. Um, huh. For the X Files, for example, it's caused a huge storm because yeah. the new series of the X Files, it, right. it was already out in the States and there wasn't even a sign of when it was aired here. I think it came on. I think it was the third episode. It was ready to wear the fourth episode in the States when it just started in the UK. So obviously everyone's annoyed by that time. Everyone's like, well, we know what happens now because we've, uh, we've read it all over the internet. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't even thought about that. I wonder if it's the same in other countries too because I got a lot of uh, – I got a lot of uh, – excuse me. <coughs> I got a lot of feedback from people in South America as well. Um, yeah. And, but I have a feeling in South America it airs at the same time as it does here in North America. Right. I know that in the rest of Europe, I think it's maybe 24 hours later as well, because I know you've got a lot of fans in Germany as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, it's really awesome. I mean, it's it's great to have fans anywhere, period, you know, but it's really it's really neat to hear from people from all over the world, especially in, you know, South America, Latin America, and, and, and Europe, and, and Germany. Yep. I've been to, never been to the UK, but I've been to Germany. It's lovely. It's gorgeous, Germany. I lived there for a year. Um, what year? It tw- got 20 years ago. I lived there for a year. It is. It's a beautiful country. Yeah. Always holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's a great place. Also, I can't believe you've never been to the UK, though. Well, I plan on it. You know, I've had Good. a lot of fans They asked me if I was going to go to... Um... Oh, the Walker, Walker Stalker Con. Yeah. I've seen that. That's a great excuse to, to to finally take that trip to the UK. I've always wanted to take, so um, I might end up doing it. Thing is, I don't really under, I don't really know what the process is as to like how one goes about doing that. I mean, do they do they invite me, or do I inquire about them, or do I go through my agent? I'm not exactly sure. Thing is, is I'm not really into signing autographs for money. Like I'm yeah. totally into signing autographs, but mm-hmm. not really taking money from it. But someone else had mentioned that some of the cast members feel sort of the same way and what they do is when when they sign autographs for money they they donate it to charity all right that's cool so that's actually that that sounds pretty appealing you know uh, yeah yeah that's um that is pretty good it's quite mm-hmm. you always wonder that because obviously i go there's other conventions here as well in the uk i will uh, sing the praises of wales comic con which i'm going to in april there's one in november as well so <laughs> cool. i can put i'll put you in i can put you in touch with the guy who runs that yeah, cool i've uh, never been to, i mean i've never been to the uk so that'd be cool i'd yeah. like to see all of it too. Um, I go to Ireland, like to Scotland. Uh, obviously, London. Never been. You know. Yeah, no, it's a brilliant place. But yeah, no, I mean, you know, you see that in conventions anyway. Because I think one of the things which got me um, <laughs> talk away from you, Walking Dead and walking to go back to conventions is, you, you know, obviously you go, you pay your money to go, and then obviously people charge the autographs. I mean, most of it's the agents anyway. I think <laughs> trying, yeah. to, trying to help get it in. But uh, right. I think the last one I saw, they were charging. Five or ten pounds for a selfie. So that's what $10, ten, fifteen dollars just to have a selfie with the with the people. It was like, okay. Warwick Davis on Life Is Short going to his conventions and yeah. <laughs> people for his, his autograph, and then the one person comes up and says, "This is my son. He's got a tumor. Can you have one for free?" And he's like, "No, I can't give him." Then everyone's going to have a tumor. I can't. No, <laughs> hysterical. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it'd be interesting. I think it'd be cool. Um, so let me know what you find out about that. Yeah, I will. I mean, um, I know for the Walker Stalker Con especially, I've never been, but I know on that one, when I was looking at the tweet when you got copied in, they, the actual people who, or the official Twitter account, they liked that as well, so oh, they, cool, they cool. probably noted you down. <laughs> oh, right on. Excellent. Excellent. But I think they had um, Andrew, yeah, Andrew Lincoln and everyone were over this year for it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I, I can't 
meet Andy um, on set. The, the second, the second part of shooting that scene, and uh, he's a terrific guy. Just a really, really nice guy. Awesome. Like, yeah, he was the only cast member I got to meet. Uh, I know that's one of the questions I think mm-hmm. that sent to me. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to meet any of the others. Uh, you know, besides you know the three that I held up at gunpoint. But um, yeah, Andy, he was very, very cool. <laughs> Cool. That was actually Chris, who was the... I'll just mention him now, since we've answered that question. <laughs> that was Chris at the Ariad Lord had asked that. He was basically, obviously, say what it was the other part of that was what it was like working with Norman Reedus. Oh, it was great. Um, actually, Norman and I kind of hit it off pretty well. Um, he, he, uh, he was very complimentary of my work. Oh, and brilliant. I, that was one of the things that Andy said to me. He said, Norman's been raving about your work. I really wanted to come over and introduce myself and, and just tell you thank you for, you know, for doing this. Um, they all sort of kind of knew that it was... It was tough. It's, you know, it's always hard going into a TV show, mm-hmm. there, and especially one that's been running for for a, a, you know a long time, and the the cast is very close knit. You know, it's almost yeah. like a fan. And a lot of TV shows you come into, and it just it seems sort of you feel like the the odd stranger at, at the table, you know, and you feel sort of uh, like I don't know, I guess sort of like an outsider. And mm-hmm. there was nothing like that on on The Walking Dead. Everyone. From the moment I got there, everyone made me feel very welcome and appreciated, and and, and they were very inclusive and friendly and outgoing, and it was a really positive experience. And, and working with Norman and Sasha and Michael and Greg and the whole crew, you know, and, and there were several of my mates from other shows that I'd done working on the crew, which was a delight. Yeah. The second assistant camera, um, this guy named Eric Leffridge, uh, he and I worked on on um, my his first movie and my first movie 20 years ago. Um, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like a little mini reunion. I hadn't seen Eric in years, so it was it was cool. It was really, really cool. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, cool. That's brilliant. It's great to see. Uh, fantastic uh, that Norman actually, you know, was praising your work as well. That's got to be huge. That's a nice accolade to it. Uh... I think the best thing that you can kind of compliment you can get as an actor is for other actors that you respect to, to, to compliment your work, you know. And yeah. No bones about saying, hey, man, you know, we, we would do a take and he'd look over at me and he'd just go, <laughs> yeah okay cool thanks man <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that really is awesome I know from the first time we spoke as well you'd said that was it D- Daryl was one of the ones you'd gone for was that well you? I, I, I or you wanted you would have loved to have done it should I say rather than one, you, one well, you I think I, I, I think I was mistaken I think actually the part that I went out for initially was not Daryl's part but it was Merle it was brother right okay that's probably me mistaken uh, and actually uh, michael rooker actually um yeah ended up, he, he's fantastic i've met him i worked with him on a on a pilot in uh, nashville tennessee a few mm-hmm. years he's really really amazing guy loves to laugh loves yeah. to up, loves to joke around um but he ended up getting that role but that, i think i'm that is actually the role that i auditioned for in the very beginning way back before they even shot the pilot yeah so yeah it was it, it was it was cool. I mean, it was it was cool to kind of just kind of finally, you know, come. Like I told you, I think I think I told you this last time. I I must have auditioned five or six, seven times for 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 that TV series. So, mm. so it was finally got to be on it. Five minutes, but still, it was a hell of a five minutes. <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. It was, it was, it was. I think just being that initial presence, the mid-season opener, it's one of the big, one of the biggest show episodes you can get because obviously everyone's dying to get back into it. Yeah. And then it opens up and there's you leading the biking gang of the saviors. And it's yeah. just like, you know, it's that, and you managed to bring such a bit of, I, I'd say there was, uh, uh, was not a comedy aspect, lightheartedness as well. Cause you, you had that sort of playfulness in your character as well. And it's, Obviously, there's questions which are coming, which will expand on that. But right. that really came across well, and it, that's I think that's what people drew people to. It's like, damn, because yeah. you, you, <laughs> it would have been awesome to have seen your character develop and see where you know how he went. Right, right. Well, it, it's cool. Uh, TV um, Yahoo TV tweeted something that night uh, afterwards. It was it made my made me feel really good. It said something like, um, "Greatest five minute character arc in TV history." <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't know if I actually have that dubious distinction, but it was still cool to hear. Um, that was something the producers, when I was doing um, ADR, which for people who don't know, it's um, uh, additional dialogue recording. Mm-hmm. I was basically just, uh, I just, they were tweaking one line uh, in the booth, but that's something the producers in Los Angeles, because we were, we were connected in, I was in New Orleans, but they were in Los Angeles. Yeah. It's something the producers had mentioned to me that they, 
they really enjoyed the the fact that there was a bit of a, a bit of twisted sort of humor to it mm-hmm. because uh, excuse me because you just don't get very much of that you know on the show it's really really is a very dark very um serious show so they don't you don't get a chance to see that you know that that very often so so good i'm glad i'm glad i got a chance to do that oh yeah no it's, it's, it was it was really fantastic um <laughs> and yeah it's just I say, it's just such a shame that it was just that that five minutes but right. it's, it's five minutes that's now everyone's going to remember and everyone will be talking about um, well, I hope so. Well, yeah, it's like like we keep joking, it's like you know you you, you didn't half go out with a bang, uh, so you yeah. to make an impression for people. <laughs> yeah, I think also I think that's the, um, and I think Greg Nicotero told me this. I think uh, me and my boys that we're the we're the, the we have the distinction of being the only characters on The Walking Dead that have um, met their end via RPG Seven. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's Rock true. Hey, I mean, I'm gonna go out, you know. It's, I, I, what's that phrase? It's better to burn out than to fade away. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. You could have been bitten and just come back as zombies later on, but you know. <laughs> but yeah. The, the... That either. Maybe you'll see a zombie head at some point. I, I can't. Couldn't remember. Was my brain intact? I don't. I don't think so. I think the brain was probably jelly inside that skull. It probably was by the time it landed and splattered yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, awesome. Cool. So I'll start going into some of the questions now. Okay. Um, I've got quite a few from a lovely uh, German lady called Tatiana. Tatiana. Uh, Tatiana. Yep. So she is, first of all, she would like to send her greetings. Um, she's a huge fan of yours. She, she's great. She's she's drawn, uh, drawn some really um, amazing artwork. Um, and uh, I'm glad to have her as a fan. And thank you very much, Tatiana. Cool, excellent, there you go. <laughs> so the first question for her, she's got some questions which are for your role, and some then obviously for yourself. So the first one's for your role is, uh, what kind of a relationship did you as, have as Bud uh, to Negan? Like his henchman, right-hand man, something like that? Well, obviously, you know, this is all up to the discussion of Robert Kirkman, but in my own mind, because I've just made up my own backstory. Mm-hmm. Now, in my own mind, I, I look at him as more than a henchman, Maybe not necessarily his number one right hand man because I think obviously that guy's probably going to show up in, in in the future. Yeah, but I think he was one of those. I think he's somebody that Negan probably got a real kick out of, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I can see Bud and Negan having some really twisted conversations. <laughs> so I guess in my own mind, he, he's more than a henchman, but less than like his chief lieutenant. Probably somewhere in like middle management. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, I would say maybe maybe Bud was one of his more reliable scouts. Um, he's somebody that he sent maybe farther and farther out because Bud had a tendency to come back with with good good stuff. And I think maybe one of the reasons why Bud was in such a great mood that day was they just found a tanker full of fuel. You know, yep. pretty big haul. You know, he yeah, yeah. To make the boss happy. You know, yep. and I, boost you up the ladder I, a bit more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think Bud was one of these people that. Um, was fanatically loyal to Negan and mm-hmm. very much sort of adopted Negan's um, philosophy wholeheartedly. So, so yeah, I think they were probably pretty close. I think I'd like to think that Negan's going to be pretty pissed off that when he finds out that Bud and his men were murdered, were killed. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so. I say it. Do, it does seem to sort of you know that kind of backstory would work because I think the, yeah. the trust the fact that you had that gang, you were leading of that gang as well. Obviously, you know definitely some sort of a trusted scout right right so that works cool so how would you describe your character bud courageous humorous cheeky and um, we kind of touched on it before <laughs> with the humor so uh i think maybe just I, I let the i let the audience decide for themselves how how i would describe him honestly i think um just personally i think bud's kind of uh He's seen so much horror that it's almost like at this point in after the za uh, at this point in time He's probably come to a place where he's sort of, I don't know, happy, but I think maybe just content with who he is and what he mm-hmm. does. And um, he, I, I get the impression that Bud is like, look, look, if I don't have to be a dick, I don't, I, I, I don't necessarily, you know, he's not necessarily going to go that way. Yeah, um, he can come off and get get his horrible business done in a, in as pleasant a fashion as possible. Um, then, then he will. I mean, I think he really meant it when he said, "Look, you seem like reasonable people. You know, it, it, you're, you're sporting dress blues for Christ's sake. <laughs> we, we, it doesn't have to go this way." That's sort of what he was, you know. Yeah. But 
same token, I don't think I don't think Bud's gonna um, I don't think Bud's gonna allow himself to be shown up, quote unquote, in front of his men. Mm -hmm. I do believe he's in a position of leadership for a reason. Yeah. And, and if you're one of Negan's saviors, um, being soft is not a quality that's gonna get you very far. Mm -hmm. I, I, I liken it to the the idea of an iron fist underneath a velvet glove type thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of where I, I I kind of that's kind kind of what I, what I was thinking of when I was making that character. Well, oh. I got I got direction from Greg too, and, and Greg, you know, his main thing was, look, we got plenty of hard asses in the show. You know, we got plenty of tough guys. You know, you're five foot seven, and you're you're, you're going toe to toe with Michael Cudlitz. <laughs> Physically imposing is not what you are. Yeah. So I had to kind of find something different than from that, something that wasn't uh, that didn't rely on physicality per se. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a big gang of really just burly dudes with automatic weapons behind me. So I don't need to be physically intimidating personally. Yeah. Um, what I need to be is the face of what's happening behind me. You know, I have to, I'm the spokesperson. And um, I, it, it, at the end of the day, he has to make it unequivocal that uh, there's no bargaining, there's no arguing, and we're asking the questions. So, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was an awesome answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. It's like it's the kind of character that can get pushed and pushed. You know, it, it, it'll take it, it'll take it. And, you know, like you say, the iron fist under the velvet glove uh, okay. just gets to one step and that's it. Then it's just like that. And, right. you know, well, the, the nasty's turned on. <laughs> Negan, 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 he's established rules. They're brutal rules. But in his own mindset, they're, they're, um, there's a logic there, you know. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and I think the whole, you know, whole idea that the society has crumbled, the structure that we, you know, all the structures that we have in a non-zombie world, all of that is crumbled and gone. And there are new rules. And these rules are more akin, in my opinion, to what you might find in the Middle Ages, yeah. you know, Dark Ages, when, when it was warlords and, um, and dukes and earls and, and knights that mm -hmm. sort of ran the game. And uh, there are rules, and there's consequences for not following the rules. Even if you're not familiar with the rules right off the bat, some things have to be uh, – sometimes you have to do bad things to establish the rules. So yeah. that's of where he was coming from, I think. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Cool. So following on from that as well, if Rick's group had met you before Negan, would you want to have been included with Rick's group, or would they have been too weak for you, for, for Bud? That's a good question. Um, no, I don't think they would have been too weak. Um, obviously, Rick's group is, is pretty hard. It is. Uh, they do have compassion. They do um, have have a sense of, of, of justice, of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. But I can't really say that Negan's group doesn't necessarily have that. It's just a twisted version, and it's their own version. But um, I honestly think Bud basically and, – and then, like I said, this all derives from my backstory, from the, what I sort of made up in my own mind – I think Bud has come to a place where he lost everything. Like he, everything that he had before is gone. He and he's done his grieving. He's done his going crazy. He's probably had his Morgan moments. Yeah. But I think at this point, um, if he had encountered Rick and 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 his group, he he might might have been able to fit in with them. Um, it, it it I think the fact that Negan found him first sort of probably set him on the path to who he is mm -hmm. when him finally yeah um, but i don't know i think all any character in, in the zombie apocalypse especially you know in, 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 in coming from someone like kirkman i mean the guy writes some really complex complex characters and um and i think a lot of it is nature kind of twists you to be you know circumstance twists you to be who you are yeah um, so I don't know. It's a great question. I, I I think it'd be interesting to see what what someone like Bud would be if he had met Rick and his group as opposed to Negan and his group. But um, but unfortunately, he met Negan instead. So. <laughs> yeah, and now he met his maker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't hope. <laughs> yeah, headless headless Bud coming back. <laughs> well, you never know. It could, yeah, like you say, the the brain might not be mashed enough, so there might still be a. <laughs> Never know. That would be really creepy and horrible, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be very crispy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So Tatiana's also saying, uh, she says here that she noticed your hands trembling slightly. Um, I'm sure that's probably part of the character, but I was going to say, how excited were you as well to play with like Norman Reedus and Michael Cudlitz? Well, I, I, and don't, don't forget Shaniqua. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was excited, but that that was an affectation, and that was something that Greg and I had, had talked about. Um, it's quite possible that Bud um, had a fancy for stimulants, mm-hmm. or um, or or was just naturally high key. Yep. Um, I, I sort of wanted to cultivate this sense that that he's relaxed on the exterior, or at least he appears to be relaxed on the exterior, but there's something sort of wound really tight inside there. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, and there's a dangerousness to it, you know, um, that I think there's an explosive, see pun, <laughs> that, that that is just sort of brimming on the surface, but you don't yeah. really, you don't really get to see it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was intentional, but, um, but you know, uh, it, I, I, that's not to say that I wasn't amazingly excited to be working with everyone. I was, I was, I was very excited. In fact, both, both I, I, we shot these scenes at two different times, about two weeks apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, half of it the first time, half of it the next time, and both times when I got to Atlanta the night before, I, I couldn't hardly sleep at all, <laughs> at all. So, so yeah, it was, it was incredibly excited. Yeah. Well, like you said, you've been trying to you were you're trying to get onto the show as much as you know several times before, so I can imagine how much that <laughs> that did build up. <laughs> well, it's difficult for me to sleep before I work anyway on any on any given thing, but on this in particular, I was particularly. Um, particularly excited and, and, and keyed up excellent excellent so Tatiana also like to say if there was a if that would be wonderful if there was a second chance would arise for you to be on the show again would you be happy about it I can't see how but <laughs> would... yeah I, I, yeah I would be ecstatic I think that'd be great the only thing I could think of would be possibly a flashback or some 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 sort of thing I know that that um, Robert Kirkman is working on a backstory for Negan right so it's possible that, that that this character may come in in the comics somewhere along the way. I'm I'm not sure. I mean, that's obviously that's I'm, I'm not privy to that mm-hmm. uh, information. But uh, but yeah, I, I would I would be absolutely ecstatic to come back and reprise that role. Um, like it, like like you said, I can't see how. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, if they decided they wanted me back, I would I would jump on it. I think they've they've shot out the season though already, so it, it probably wouldn't be anytime this season. Yeah, no, it'd be good if they did backstory, or I mean, ah, to be honest, The Walking Dead could, there's so many spin-offs you could have from it, you could have the entire right. spin-off based on, ne- you know, I say Negan and your gang there, so you could have... And uh, I have Fear of the Walking Dead, so uh, I don't know if this is possible, but there's always a chance that there may be some sort of situation where you might meet Bud and Fear the Walking Dead long before he ever took up with Negan and his men, so... Well, yeah, exactly, entire possibilities in the whole, uni- in the whole Walking and, uh, Dead universe. There's more than one uh, story to be told in this universe. I mean, as far as I know, they've left it open-ended. It's a really big universe, so you, you never can tell. Never well, can yeah, tell. exactly. I mean, if you just think... I would jump at it. Awesome, yeah. Well, you're right, because I suppose if you think about each of the characters that come in, then it's like... Well, it's just like open a multiverse, isn't it? Because, you, you know, all these alternate universes, you can... What happened to them? How did they become who they were? You know, so you've got yeah. so many storylines that could actually feed on and on for you. Yeah. Sorry, is that... A, your dog just popped up behind you there. Oh yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's that's Willie. Oh, bless. <laughs> so I apologise for that. Just took my <laughs> took my attention. This little thing popping up <laughs> popping up behind you. <laughs> He's a good boy. Cool. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> moving on from Tatiana as well. Um, these are personal questions for her. That actually goes. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Uh, yeah, I do. I have. Uh, I've got three brothers and four sisters. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Big family. <laughs> Sounds it. Yeah. yeah. Fun growing up. Uh, she sort of threw your short role as a saviour as well, but she said she's she you've won a good few fans. Um, her herself is from Germany and also a friend. Would you like to gain and know more fans in Germany and across the world? Would I like to... Um, could you... <clears throat> gain more fans and know more uh, fans across the world and in Germany? Absolutely. The, the more the merrier. Um, yeah, I, I, I would absolutely love that. I'm still sort of adjusting to this whole idea of having fans. Um, <laughs> um, but yes, absolutely. Awesome, cool. That's actually all for Tatiana. So okay. <laughs> she yeah, actually she can, she did send me a whole load through. So I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, thank you for asking. I appreciate that, and thanks for being my fan. <laughs> Awesome. Now, Chris, the Ariad Lord, we've already answered because that was the one at the earlier on about working with Norman Reedus. So we've answered that one. There's also one from Nolo. Um, and he's he's basically asking, after the explosion and we saw the burning head, did you keep the head as a souvenir? We had a brief <laughs> discussion about this before we went on air. Yeah. 
I wanted to, but they uh, they didn't give it to me. I, they still had to shoot some stuff with it, and I'm so and I'm not sure if perhaps it doesn't show up later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's possible that Negan might find my head, or someone might bring my head to Negan. So I don't know. I, I, as I was telling Chris earlier, I think it would be lovely if it someday showed up in a box um, on my doorstep. Um, that would be a great souvenir. Uh, mm-hmm. So hopefully. Oh, you just. Oh, yeah, you cut off then. Sorry, Chris, you went a bit. Sorry, no, I was just saying hopefully that'll happen someday. Um, hopefully it'll show up someday on my doorstep. <laughs> yeah, that's like just a mafia style head just a bit. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Freak everyone out. <laughs> cool. So Nolo's also asking, what kind of music do you like? Well, actually, um, I tweeted a couple of songs last night from a band called Iron and Wine that I'm really, uh, I'm really a big fan of. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big fan of Elliot Smith. Um, a big fan of a, a musician, singer songwriter named Jason Isbell. Um, but my my taste in music is really eclectic. Eclectic. But my my favorite genre is. Um, is sort of alt country uh, singer songwriters um, that kind of thing. Um, Sunvolt. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Sunvolt or uh, Uncle Tupelo. Um, uh, Ryan Adams. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just to name a few. But yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of where I I, I, I like uh, I, I like and I like bluegrass too. That's it's uh, it's <laughs> one of my favorite uh, genres of music, cool. which is very. It's a small category, but I, I love I love bluegrass music. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cool. What about modern rock, like uh, Florida Georgia Line? I seem to have taken. Have you heard of them? Oh no, haven't you? All oh, right, okay. Well, that's just died in the water. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that my friends turn me on to that I haven't heard, but but I'll instantly love. Um, one of my best friends is an actor named Sean Bridgers. Um, and he's turned probably half the music that I've listened to nowadays. He's turned me on to. Um, yeah. Including Jason Isbell, so um, yeah, I, I usually just I, I I I don't go out and seek new music. I just get turned on to new music by my friends and and, and, and stuff like that. So, but I'm open to anything. So send me a link and I'll take a listen. Yeah, no, it's like a progressive country. It's like modern, you know, the modern sort of country. That's pretty good. Blasting yeah, away in my car, it's a. <laughs> oh right, I bet that would be kind of interesting to see, like to hear, like drive by someone on a UK freeway and have them listening and listening to American country rock that's it's cool <laughs> yeah awesome though when it's obviously with my bad singing voice as well especially stuck in a motorway and i've got my window wound down open and just blasting away people are just like looking what are you doing <laughs> hey listen if you're in the car or in the shower you're it's it's fair game you can sing as much as you like no matter what kind of voice you have that's yeah, my exactly <laughs> it always sounds better as well it sounds like you're in tune when you're in the car <laughs> or, or the or shower shower so there's this acoustic effect it's, man i sound really good no you don't <laughs> yeah, there's your poor dog screaming and howling in the back. <laughs> cool. So the last question from Nola, it's a bit of a personal one, I think, is, um, which I don't normally ask. It's about tattoos. Do you have any? <laughs> if you uh, want to talk about them, it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got a couple. I've got uh, I've got a stylized eagle on my uh, right shoulder, and I've got a little cowboy boot with a Texas flag on my left shoulder because I'm a Texan. So. Don't plan on getting any more, though. Um, <laughs> Those I got those a long time back. One was because of a girl, and the other one was on a dare from my friends. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, uh, those two. Maybe you'll see them someday. I don't know. <laughs> cool. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. And the last question I've got is from uh, Clandis is my muse, and uh, that's mm-hmm. the Twitter name. Mm-hmm. And it's just who's the one actor or actress you haven't worked with yet that you'd love to? Ah, uh, well, Ed Harris, um, Jeff Bridges. Mm-hmm. Uh, Edward Norton, Sam Rockwell, um, Meryl Streep, um, uh, Claire Danes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen um, uh, 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 a movie called um, Oh God, I'm spacing on it now. Um, it's an HBO film. She plays an autistic woman, uh, and it's based on a true story. But uh, I just watched it uh, a couple of days ago for this, like the fifth time. I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on it, but she's really amazing. Just uh, God, just amazing performance. Um, yeah, there's actually just a host of actors out there and actresses. I, I, when I say actors, I mean both because you know I, I don't make the distinction very you know the gender distinction. Yeah. Um, 
there's a whole host of them out there that are just really, really good. And I would love to love, love to work with them. Um, awesome. Yeah. But yeah, that's just to name a few, just right off the top of my head. I, 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 I'm sure I read that question. I should have prepared better. I'm always, I was, <laughs> it's like, good. it's like when you, you know, you go into a, a, a music store and you know all these uh, musicians that you want to buy before you walk into the store, and then you walk into the store, and then it all goes out of your head. Um, oh yeah. But uh, but yeah. Anyway. Cool. You mentioned Ed Harris there, did you? Oh man, Ed he's Harris. He's just phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 a legend. You know, he really is a legend, and and I, I've never he's never given a performance that I wasn't riveted by. Mm-hmm. I watched uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross the other night for like the umpteenth time, and <laughs> just so many amazing performances in that film. If you haven't seen the movie, you should, definitely should. It's it. The Jack Lemon is is one of the main characters in it, and he's mm-hmm. he's passed away, but just an unbelievable actor. Um, you, you learn so much as an actor watching great actors like 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 Jack Lemon, yeah, and Ed Harris and Al Pacino. Even Kevin Spacey, I think, was that was one of his uh, first films where he really, really stood out. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. My wife's favorite actor. <laughs> oh, great, he's fantastic. That's another one I'd love to work with. But <laughs> excellent. No, that's, that sounds great. As like, like you say, there's probably just so many out there. Who, yeah, it would be awesome to get to work with a lot of people. I think. Yeah, for sure. Oh, here's another one. I would love to work with uh, with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant at some point in time. <laughs> Find it's going to be hysterical, and uh, and what they put out is really great. I love extras. Mm-hmm. I love Office, um, both the British and American versions. I love Life is Short uh, with Warwick Davis. Just absolutely hysterical. Yeah. Have you yeah. Have you ever seen an idiot abroad? Yes. <laughs> every single episode of it and Carl Pilkington is so amazing and the funny thing about Carl is he's not even trying no he's just being him and uh, yeah he's he's fantastic there's another British actress that I find that just, I think is really fantastic I think her name her first name is Ashley and I'm, I'm spacing on her last name is she played um, Ricky Gervais's friend in extras and she's just she's just brilliant just so so good mm. um and, and and the thing is, is that I, I'd never even come across her until I saw extras. But I I just was floored with how how good she is. She's really really good. But there's just I mean there's there's so many great actors out there. And I hope to work with all of them. I just hope to keep working. Really. <laughs> what <it Well>. was. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ricky Gervais. He's 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 just an absolute star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He really is. Both love Ricky Gervais. Yeah, he's 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 a one of a kind, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So, have you got any? Oh. It's, it's hysterical. Sorry, Co. Steve Merchant is hysterical too, though. I mean, I don't know if you've seen extras, but Stephen Merchant plays his, his agent mm. on, on that series. It, it's it's so it's so good. He's so good at playing a bad agent, a horrible <laughs> horrible. Uh, but anyway, we could, we'd, we'd probably we could spend hours talking about this this particular subject. So. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's been a long, long time since I've seen extras. Good, I think I watched the first series, but I've not actually had time to any watch any of those after that. I should definitely binge watch it sometime. It's fantastic. Oh, I intend to. <laughs> the final episode is great because he goes on this show. I, it's a, I think it's a UK show. It's called Big Brother. Or Big Brother, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's. I've never even heard of Big Brother before, but he, he ends up going on the show, and it's just, oh, my God, it was hysterical. Anyway, I'll put it for you. But, uh, but, yeah, check it out. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Big Brother's a horrible show. It's, uh... <laughs> it, it, it appeared to be. Uh, yeah. But... You people just... Actually... Yeah, people... Cause they actually sit there. People seriously sit there all day, and they watch TV to watch people sitting in a house. I've got... I really just don't understand it. It's a huge... Like... Hard... They're just celebrity, or used to be celebrities, or some tabloid celebrities, or something of yeah. that nature. They're, they're all kind of smooshed into this house together, yeah, uh, because they're famous, I guess, or or in, yeah. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what you call them, but uh, yeah, they just sort of bring it in. It actually started without being celebrities, so it was just ordinary people huh? off the street, you know, different people from different walks of life, and just putting them all in. And you know, I, I'd, I'd sit there and I'd like. I just need to look around my lounge to see the same sort of situation. I don't need to look at watch a TV show for it. <laughs> Weird. 
Very, very weird. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, what, you've got any further plans for 2016? You've got anything in the pipeline that you can talk about? Or? Well, I'm waiting to hear if I'm going to uh, be playing a, a recurring role on this um, really amazing Sundance Channel t- uh, television show called Rectify. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just put myself out there um, for it a few days ago, so fingers crossed. Um uh, but no, actually, uh, I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to several things that I did last year coming out. Um, yeah. Several. Uh, I think we talked about this last time. Free State of Jones, mm-hmm. uh, a film called The Whole Truth, which is a courtroom drama with Keanu Reeves and uh, Gugu Mbatha-Raw. Mm-hmm. I worked in two films last year with Gugu, and um, she's a fantastic person. I really, I really enjoyed uh, getting to know her and becoming her friend and and working with her. But uh, there's those two, and then there's. Um, there's a Halle Berry movie called Kidnap um, coming out, and a western that I worked uh, on with um, Woody Harrelson and uh, Liam Hemsworth called um, By Way of Hela- uh, Helena, right. which I'm looking forward to as well. I, I, that's my favorite genre of film. Is I, I would do westerns my whole life if that's all. If anyone ever wanted to do, it's just you. I won't, can only do one genre. <laughs> you going to be? Yeah, I would definitely it would be westerns. But uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to those. But uh, at this point in time, I'm unemployed. And uh, I'm just sort of kicking back and waiting for the next big thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, yeah, fingers crossed for Rectify. That's uh, JD's on that one as well, isn't he? Yeah. 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 I mentioned my friend Sean Bridgers. He was also on uh, on, um, on Rectify as well. Oh, right. Awesome. So that'd be a nice little there. Uh... Runner is this man, uh, a man named uh, Ray McKinnon, who's just an amazing actor, but he's also an amazing director, an amazing writer. Um, if you get a chance, check out a short film that won the Academy Award called The Accountant. Mm-hmm. Ray McKinnon, he wrote it. He directed it. He starred in it, and it won the Oscar for best short. Um, so, and I've met Ray. I, I like Ray a lot. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping to get a chance to work for him soon. So keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure we all will. <laughs> no, that'd be awesome. That'd be brilliant. It's still on my list. I've actually got it on my um, DVR. Is Rectify to, to watch and binge watch that as well because it's, it's some stuff out there. It's still there. You'll get hooked on it, man. It's it, it really is a, a very good show. It hasn't gotten necessarily the broad appeal that some of these other shows have, but uh, the critical appeal, uh, the critical acclaim, is just off the charts. I mean, it's p- people who who who, who uh, are very discerning about content uh, have given it some really really high marks, and, uh, and 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 it deserves them, in my opinion. It's, it's a really good show. Yeah, I have seen. It's been you know it's critically acclaimed. I've seen it. You know, so many decent reviews about it. So. It's definitely on my DVR to watch. <laughs> right on. Excellent. Even more so now, because I say I know JD, and if you can, fingers crossed, um, <laughs> I'll be able to sit there and watch it and say, I'll, I know both those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope so. Hope yeah. so. I mean, I was sitting there, and I know it did, to be fair, I did annoy my wife, because when Walking Dead came on that episode, I was sitting uh-huh. there going, look, there he is, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, shut up and let me watch the show. Yeah, she was. She was like, yeah, she, literally. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's Chris. <laughs> uh, it's cool. So I always get a kick um, when I see my friends. Uh, you know, I'm flipping channels or something, and I'll see my friends. It's always fun to, to you know, just be flipping around and go, oh, wow, look, it's, I know her. I know him. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I've got, I've got to say I've got kudos at work as well because a lot of the guys I've interviewed, they're from, like, niche shows as well, like Constantine or the Shannara, um, and people at work just don't watch them, and I, I'm, I'm devastated. <laughs> so I'm like, "Come on, guys, what are you watching?" But then obviously everyone watches The Walking Dead, so I was like, "Right." I said, "Remember, you know," I said, uh, "Bud, the guy at the beginning, the savior," and they're like, "Yeah, yeah." I said, "He's coming on my show," I said, and they're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> right on, man. Uh- yeah, so they were they were actually really really excited. <laughs> um- so there you go. See, you got a, you got a fan base. You're known everywhere. <laughs> uh, awesome. <laughs> cool so that actually brings me to the end of the interview anyway for today or the chat shall I say it's been right. a, a pleasure as always so any last minute thing that you want to say to your fans at all for the... uh, you know just thank you so much you know all you guys for your your, your, your Twitter support and your great comments and your great great um, uh, 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 just for just just for being so sweet and cool um, I, I really I really really appreciate it and I hope to be um, bringing you more stuff in the future Fantastic. Cheers. Thank you very much. Well, everyone, yeah. that, that was Chris Berry. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, once again. That was absolutely fantastic, and I hope that everybody got the answers that they were looking for. Um, once again, you have been listening to Ramblings of a Hellblazer with your host, as always, myself, Chris Gordon. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>